Jerry Hansen, a cardiologist at the Central City Hospital, went to his favorite steak bar after a hard day's work. He was very hungry, so he placed an order and glanced around the small bar area. He noticed a waiter walking towards his table with an order, when suddenly, he heard a loud girl's cry. One of the girls sitting opposite jumped up from her chair and began to gasp for air with her open mouth. She grabbed her throat with her hands, went out into the passage, and began to sink to the floor. At that moment, the man also heard her girlfriend scream. Help! She's choking! Call a doctor! Is there a doctor here? Help! She is dying! The girl fussed senselessly over the lying girlfriend and looked around helplessly. Jerry Hansen clattered up from his chair and hurried to help. He pushed his hysterical girlfriend away and sat down on the floor next to the lying girl. I'm a doctor. Don't panic. Call an ambulance. At first, he tried to reach with his fingers a piece of meat that clogged her trachea. But all this was to no avail. The piece of food sat very tightly. The girl almost turned blue, and her attempts to inhale air were unsuccessful. She was losing consciousness, rolling her bulging eyes. He remembered the theoretical course of first aid, put his hands on top of her stomach, on her stomach, and began to perform energetic pushes towards the diaphragm. But it was to no avail. Action had to be taken immediately. Jerry Hansen ran to his table, grabbed the meat knife, and ran back to the girl on the floor. He put a crumpled jacket under her neck and threw back her head. Jerry gave the girl a deep incision. He quickly pulled a ballpoint pen out of an inside pocket and inserted a plastic tube into the incision, dropping the refill onto the floor. The girl took a hissing breath and opened her eyes. Jerry Hansen wiped the sweat from his forehead, calmed the girl with a gesture and asked her to lie down. Now all they had to do was wait for medical attention. Literally a few minutes later, the doctors from the emergency room ran into the restaurants. Jerry Hansen went into detail with the senior physician about the actions taken and dictated his contacts just in case. The doctor who arrived shook his hand with gratitude and said, The girl is lucky. You did everything right. Otherwise, she would have died. And now she can even consider this day as her second birthday. The injured girl was quickly loaded onto a stretcher and rolled to the car. The man looked at the ambulance leaving. He never cut people, but now he was proud of himself that he managed to save a man's life. The next morning, the man began with congratulations from colleagues. After a call to the head physician from the Senior Physician of Emergency Medical Care, the news of his heroic deed quickly spread throughout the hospital. Three days have passed since his unscheduled operation, but colleagues stubbornly did not want to forget this case. That day, the man was going to go to the dining room for lunch, but suddenly the floor of his office flung open. A short middle-aged woman appeared on the threshold, the doctor said, looking at the woman. Come back in 40 minutes, please. I'm on my lunch break. But she was in no hurry to leave the office. The woman who entered took a firm step towards the doctor's table. She took a form out of her bag and thrust it angrily into his hands. Jerry Hansen ran his eyes over the lines of the document and looked up in bewilderment. He was angry. Subpoena? What does it mean? What are these jokes? Who are you? I'm the mother of the unfortunate girl whose throat you cut open. Why did you undertake such an operation without proper education? Her lips trembled with anger. Jerry Hansen said with surprise and anger, On what basis? I am a doctor and I was on site and assessed the situation. I knew what I was doing. Doctor, I see. You are not a surgeon, but a cardiologist. So measure the pressure of old women and don't meddle in something you do not understand anything about. The woman took a breath and continued her fiery speech. My poor Susan, you left her without a voice and she is a soloist of an academic choir and had to go to an international competition. Jerry Hansen said, not believing that all this was happening to him. I saved her life. No, you destroyed it. According to her, 
Her daughter Susan is a talented singer, and the doctor put an end to her career. Doctors don't know when her voice will be restored and whether it is possible at all. And she, Maria Anderson, is the widow of a well-known businessman in the city, and she has enough connections and funds to break the doctor's life. A woman screamed in Jerry's office, then rushed out, slamming the door loudly. The man rubbed his temples, thought hard, and for several minutes looked discouraged into the space in front of him. He was sure that all the accusations against him were just some kind of absurdity. The preliminary investigation went very quickly. A couple of weeks later, he received a call with the date of the scheduled court hearing. When the man appeared at the meeting, he realized that it was not a court, but a demonstrative massacre. There was no such court. He had the feeling that people had gathered in a small hall just to announce the verdict. Jerry Hansen sat in the defendant's seat next to his lawyer. The young man tried with all his might to help his client who was in trouble, but he already understood that he would most likely lose the case because the side prosecution was well prepared. The meeting began, and the prosecutor who got up from his seat read in complete silence. Jerry Hansen is accused of negligently causing harm to the health of the victim, Susan Anderson. Jerry Hansen clenched his fist at these words and stared at the table. At the side prosecution enthusiastically and picturesquely told the court about how the doctor, who didn't have proper training and was not currently on duty, harmed the health of Susan Anderson with his incompetent actions. They called witnesses one by one to confirm this. The victim's personal doctor was the first to testify for the prosecution. For half an hour, he talked behind the podium that the girl, most likely, would not be able to sing due to the illiterate actions of Jerry Hansen. The lawyer sitting next to Jerry raised his hand and gave his opinion. And why don't you tell the court that in the hospital, after the necessary incision was made by my clients, the girl underwent a more serious surgical intervention on her throat when they tried to get a stuck piece of food. The doctor who testified shrugged his shoulders and answered. But it was the logical conclusion of the actions already taken, and if Jerry Hansen had not intervened, we could have done without surgery at all. He misjudged the danger. The witness, having finished his speech, looked in the direction of Jerry, went to his place, and after a while he left on his own business without waiting for the end of the meeting. Then, the word was given to the girl's friend Amelia. She quite sincerely stated that she herself would have been able to help the injured friend if the defendant had not taken the initiative into her own hands. After all, she is graduating from medical school and Jerry Hansen didn't let her do this. Jerry almost choked when he heard this. He clearly remembered how she rushed helplessly around the restaurant and desperately called for help at least someone. Then a waiter was called into the meeting room, who confirmed Amelia's words. The last to speak was an emergency physician, who arrived on a call to the scene. He was the only one of all who said that the assistance was provided in a timely manner, and all actions were justified. But such a surgical intervention should be performed by a specialist. But they didn't have time to transport the injured girl. She would suffocate. He tried to explain this to the court. However, no one was going to listen to his words, since there was plenty of evidence of Jerry Henson's guilt. No one from the hospital was invited to confirm the doctor's qualifications, and the man was upset. The judge collected the papers and went into the conference room before the verdict was announced. Mariah Anderson leaned toward the defendant and whispered angrily, I'm satisfied with the process. Don't be afraid. You won't go to jail but you will pay us compensation from your meager salary until your death. The victim slowly approached them with a smirk on her face, chewing on a chocolate bar. She looked at Jerry Hansen contemptuously, hugged her mother, and opened her mouth to say something caustic and insulting, but she suddenly clutched her throat, trying to inhale the air. The girl realized with horror that a strange spasm had arisen in her throat and air was not entering her lungs. 
Susan staggered and began to slowly slide down, holding on to her mother. The dumbfounded woman tried to catch her daughter, but could not resist and fell to the floor with her. She shook the girl by the shoulders and loudly called her name. The girl took several convulsive half-sighs, arched her back, and lost consciousness. The frightened woman screamed in horror. Amelia, help! But Amelia only rolled her eyes and shook her head violently. The girl absolutely didn't understand what she could do in the situation. Mariah Anderson's eyes darted around the meeting room, as there must have been an emergency physician somewhere among those seated. The woman looked for him and looked at him pleadingly, but he just shook his head and defiantly began to dial the ambulance number. He didn't want to be next in the place of the defendants, because at the moment, he was not in the line of duty. Maria Anderson looked at her daughter's rapidly turning blue face and realized that she had nowhere to wait for help. She realized that her daughter would die in her arms before the arrival of doctors. The woman let out a cry of despair and glanced at Jerry Hansen, folding her hands in a pleading gesture. She crawled on her knees towards him, and he himself overturned the chair and hurried to the fallen girl. He fumbled for a ballpoint pen in his pocket, shook the refill out onto the floor, and bent over the lying girl. He carefully examined the stitches in his neck, easily ripped them open, and inserted a plastic tube from the handle into the incision he made in the restaurant in Susan's larynx. When the girl let out her first wheezing and convulsive breath, the doctor looked around at everyone present with a devastated look, and in ringing silence slowly returned to his place at the table, trying to calm the trembling in his hands. Thoman then thanked and apologized to Jerry. He was cleared of all charges in the courtroom, and Maria Anderson for a long time tried to smooth her guilt over the good man Jerry Hansen.